As we said, it's a double court day for former U.S. President Donald Trump. The hush money trial is entering its third day in New York, while the U.S. Supreme Court is hearing the arguments in Washington over his immunity bid in the federal election case. The hearing will determine if Trump should be immune from prosecution for any action that he took during his time as the president. Trump's immunity appeal is regarding the case of the election subversion, one of the four criminal cases the Republican presidential candidate faces. The federal case brought by special counsel Jack Smith back in December and accused Trump of conspiring to block the peaceful transfer of power after losing the 2020 elections to Joe Biden. In this case, Trump faces three felony counts to derail the transfer of power, this in part by affecting the voting rights of millions and pressuring government officials to override the election results based on his claims that it was fraud. The special counsel has argued that these efforts culminated in the events of January 6, 2021, when Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol. The trial start date was set in March. However, Trump's lawyers filed a series of motions seeking to postpone the case against him. They argue that the accusations against Trump fall within the range of presidential actions that courts have often ruled and are legally protected, at least from civil lawsuits. Now, the question of whether an ex-president is immune from prosecution is legally untested in the United States, as this is the first time the former White House occupant had been charged with a crime. The hearing is crucial and underway as it will not only quash the charges against Trump but also alter the U.S. presidency. If the theory of presidential immunity is adopted, it will provide extraordinary consolidation of power in the Oval Office. Trump is hoping for a friendly hearing from a court he had a critical role in shaping. There is a bench of six conservative and three liberal judges. While three of the judges are appointed by him, Trump is forced to be present in the Manhattan court for the hush money trial and to watch his alleged tabloid co-conspirator David Pecker's testimony about the bid to kill controversial stories that could have derailed his 2016 White House campaign. Well, we have a big case today. This uh, judge isn't allowing me to go. Uh, we have a big case today in the Supreme Court on presidential immunity. A president has to have immunity. If, if you don't have immunity, you just have a ceremonial president. Let's now head to the U.S. Supreme Court hearing where arguments are underway for presidential immunity for Donald Trump. We think it's clear he did not, that this was done in an official capacity. The defendant asked the Arizona House Speaker to call the legislature into session to hold a hearing based on their claims of election fraud. Absolutely an official act for the president to communicate with state officials on a matter of enormous federal interest and concern, attempting to defend the, uh, uh, the integrity of a federal election, to communicate with state officials and urge them to view what he views as their job uh, uh, under state law and federal law. That's an official act. Well, att attempting to defend the integrity of the election, I mean, that's the defense. The allegation is that he was attempting to overthrow uh, an election. Essentially, exactly right. And neither allegation of what the purpose is should make a determination, should make a difference as to whether it's immune. That is extremely strong precedent from this court. Does it, um, does it strike you as odd that your understanding of uh, immunity goes way beyond what OLC has ever claimed for the a former president? I view the OLC opinions here as strongly supporting us because any time a congressional statute basically got anywhere near touching the president's prerogatives, they've said, oh, we're going to interpret the statute narrowly to avoid that. So well, that's a different question. I mean, uh, what OLC has always said is that sitting presidents get immunity, but former presidents, no. Now, there might be um, uh, a different argument made about whether a statute or whether a statute has applied to particular conduct uh, is 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 uh, properly um, uh, available against the president, but that's a very different argument than the immunity claim that you are making here, which OLC has definitively not supported. I don't I don't know if I put it that way. I don't recall an opinion directly addressing it, but more fundamental to us, Your Honor, is in fact the language of cases like Marbury and statements like. 
made by Benjamin Franklin at the Constitutional Convention, statements of George Washington talking about the massive risk of factional strife and how that could destroy the republic and erect a new government on the ruins of public liberty. That's what we rely on principally here. I cite the OLC opinions because, of course, what you see there is a very strong trend that if there's any statute that might trench in any way on the president's prerogatives, which they, they, adopt, they interpret it to avoid that. Um, uh, if a president sells nuclear secrets to a foreign adversary, is that immune? That sounds like, similar to the bribery example, likely not immune. Now, if it's structured as an official act, he would have to be impeached and convicted first before. What does uh, that mean, if it's structured as an official act? Uh, well, I don't know in the hypothetical whether or not that would be an official act. You'd probably have to have more details to apply the blazing game uh, uh, analysis or even the Fitzgerald analysis that we've been talking about. How about if a president um, orders the military to stage a coup? Uh, I think that... As the Chief Justice pointed out earlier, where there is a whole series of, you know, sort of guidelines against that, so to speak, like the UCMJ for, prohibits the military from following a plainly unlawful act. If one adopted Justice Alito's test, that would fall outside. Now, if one adopts, for example, the Fitzgerald test that we advance, that may well be an official act, and he would have to be, as I'll say in response to all these kinds of hypotheticals, uh, has to be impeached and convicted before he can be criminally prosecuted. But I emphasize to the court that... Well, he's gone let's say, this president who ordered the military to stage a coup. He's no longer president. He wasn't impeached. He couldn't be impeached. Um, but, but he ordered the military to stage a coup, and you're saying that's an official act. Uh, I think it would depend that's on... That's immune. I, I think it would depend on the circumstances, whether it was an official act. If it were an official act, again, he would have to be impeached. Well, what does that mean, depend on the circumstances? He was the president. He um, uh, is the commander-in-chief. Um, he talks to his generals all the time, and he told the generals, I don't feel like leaving office. I want to stage a coup. Is, is, is that immune? If, if it's an official act, there needs to be impeachment and conviction beforehand because the framers viewed the that, that kind of If very it's an official risk. act, is it an official act? If it's an official act, it's impeachment. Is it an official act? On, on the way you described that hypothetical, it could well be. I, I just don't know. You'd have to, again, it's a fact-specific, context-specific determination. That That's answer sounds to me oh. as though... Well, this further, our correspondent Susan Tehrani is joining us live from New York. Susan, we have been hearing Supreme Court's hearing uh, all this while, and to put it very nicely, Donald Trump's lawyer is being grilled at the moment. What are your takeaways? Yeah, they certainly are, especially by those uh, liberal Supreme Court judges, as, as we're hearing uh, questions of hypotheticals, if you may, for example, if a president stages a coup, uh, if a president uh, sells a secret uh, documents regarding the nuclear uh, files uh, to a foreign country and whatnot, you know, things that would possibly amount to treason. Uh, so, you know, I understand what they're trying to get to on the one hand, but on the other hand, this issue of immunity really ultimately leads to that January 6th riot on the Capitol. And uh, the judges need to be convinced uh, that Donald Trump really played an active role without reasonable doubt in, in, in what happened that day. And then the immunity for other issues then come in, comes into questions as well. His lawyers are arguing that uh, if a president is constantly afraid of being tried in a court after he leaves office, uh, then uh, they can't make proper decisions as commander in chief. But again, you know, we'll see if the judges really go along with that. Um, I think we'll expect uh, a result or some kind of, uh, you know, uh, outcome right. by June. Right. Uh, Susan, this could go either way. Either Trump has immunity or he did, doesn't have immunity. But either way, you know, the judgment will mark one of the most important uh, decisions on presidential power in the yeah. history of the United States. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's nowhere else, no way else to put it. And, you know, one after the other with these uh, Donald Trump cases, we're always in uncharted territory. And uh, the justices really, despite the fact that they really want to stay out of politics, notably in an election year. They're really at the center of it. And not only will it 
affect moving forward other presidents that come into office, but it will affect this year's presidential elections uh, as well, exceptionally. I mean, even in the, the debates, you know, one way or the other, uh, past presidents and their actions are going to come uh, in the conversation and in debates, and it'll be interesting to see which way it veers. All right, Susan, thank you so much for getting us all those updates from New York. For all the latest news, download the Vyond app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.